Cinema is typically a medium of absolutes and opposites. Big versus small, restrained versus overblown, but most of all, good versus evil. At some level, that conflict drives all stories, so it's pretty important that there's balance. The more heroic a hero, the badder the bad guy, and vice versa. That makes it incredibly jarring when we're presented with an underdog best described as idiotic who still manages to put a titan on his backside. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are 10 ruthless movie villains who lost to complete fools. Number 10, Biff Tannen. For multiple generations, the Tannens were the scourge of Hill Valley, from schoolyard bullies to gun-toting outlaws and Trump-like overlords. They held the town in a vice-like grip of fear. They were villains, good and proper. So why exactly were every single one of the villainous Tannens featured in the Back to the Future series undone by a hyperactive, backwards-running social misfit with a questionable relationship with an elderly eccentric and also his mother? Yeah. Marty could never have physically bested Biff, and yet he did so on multiple occasions. And even worse, Biff was then knocked out by a single punch from a sci-fi writing, socially awkward dweeb with a peeping Tom complex. In reality, this would have all gone very differently. Number nine, everyone who ever got beaten by Rocky. Rocky is the ultimate expression of the underdog loser victory. Balboa is the poster boy for the underachieving no-hoper who emerges with his dignity intact and a girl in tow because he sticks to his convictions and gives a champ a real fight. He doesn't win, but that was the right decision. Bloody hell, he gave it a go, and then somehow he ends up becoming the world's greatest boxer overnight, despite the fact that he can't throw a punch convincingly. The whole point of him was he wasn't the greatest boxer in the world. He just had willpower. That's the point of the original, trying hard, not necessarily succeeding. Clubber Lang is an unrestrained animal, and Apollo Creed was a nation's favorite champ, and yet those two were somehow outboxed by a chancer from the back streets. Number eight, Bruce the Shark. Bruce the Shark is probably the single greatest movie monster of all time, even with the ridiculous sequels which introduced inferior, even more plastic looking replacements. He was a tangible threat and even managed to sink an entire boat, kill its occupant and then leave him inside the hull like some sort of finned ninja. How did you leave that head in there, Shark? Answer me. And yet apparently the might of the most notorious killer in all the ocean wasn't enough to take on a boozy partially washed up small time police chief, a boozy washed up and probably entirely insane sea captain, and a boozy sea nerd. Together the ragtag bunch of alcohol soaked survivors, or well two of them anyway, managed to kill the greatest monster in Hollywood history despite the fact that Bruce clearly had it in his power to sink and eat their boat twice. Number seven, the Borg Queen. Everyone loves Picard, he's noble and distinguished, and he made Captain Kirk look like an uncouth tubby philandra. The only thing is, he was never all that convincing when it came to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat or situations where he couldn't use his guile to gain the upper hand. And yet, old man Picard was somehow able to resist the irresistible, defying the all-powerful leader of the Borg who seemed for some reason to want to have a sexual relationship with him. Who doesn't? I do. The Borg Queen should have been an unstoppable force, the very manifestation of her kind who could defeat armies with a single wave of her part mechanical arm, and yet she's somehow defeated by an old man ruled by his own commanders to be unstable and a fancy reimagining of the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Not cool. Number six, Lord Voldemort. The final Harry Potter book and the films were billed as the epic conclusion to the story when the boy who lived would face off against the greatest dark wizard of all time. Voldemort had, up to that point, single-handedly killed lots of people, both wizards and muggles with reckless abandon and a sneering ignorance of the value of their lives. He was a dark wizard using unforgivable curses and had proved himself to be on an almost demigod status and yet he is undone by what amounts to a shield spell. F**k that. Because of the restrictions on killing curses even in battle, Harry is not actually allowed to use the easiest tool available to him and instead has to fiercely attempt to disarm his bloodthirsty foe and yet somehow still the boy who has proved himself to be not a very good wizard at all, at least in academic terms, somehow prevails. Number five, The Terminator. So a walking, talking killbot from the future with scant regard for human life and irresistible conviction to kill and prevent the future human resistance happening is basically defeated by a timid waitress with no combat training, a worryingly fragile mental state, and a single human dude from the future. That does not sit right. Arnie's Terminator was an unstoppable killing force who could and should have squashed Connor like a bug. And it's not like Kyle Reese is much use either. It all seems to hinge on the fact that the super intelligent robots from the future somehow couldn't plan to simply send the Terminator back back in time to when Sarah Connor was in kindergarten and kill her then, you stupid machines. 
Number four, Freddy Krueger. Even despite lots of terrible sequels, Freddy Krueger remains one of the most iconic horror villains in the history of cinema, and the early performances by Robert Englund were enough to have us all weeping and sleep deprived. But Krueger was repeatedly defeated by a small army of teenagers who somehow overcame their crippling fear of him and his big slicey glove. And yet none of the teenagers who bested Freddy were particularly skilled or strong. They invariably ran away and gave him ample opportunity to kill them. To be fair, Freddy was also his own worst nightmare, spending way too much time larking about me making jokes and generally acting as camp as Christmas to actually get the simple job done, so maybe that one's on him. Number three, the evil queen. Quite how the seven dwarfs ever even got a job working down the mines is beyond baffling, let alone how they conspired to kill one of the most terrifying villains in all of Disney history. If anyone nowadays walked into a job interview and declared themselves to be cripplingly bashful, distractingly sneezy, as lethargic as sleepy or just plain dopey, they'd have been marched out without a second glance. And yet the unlikeliest band of action heroes in all of cinema managed to chase the evil queen, a witch of considerable ability, judging by her metamorphosis and command of potions, up a mountain to her death in response to her killing of Snow White. Why didn't she just turn them into frogs and step on them? Number two, the meteorite. Throughout Hollywood history, Mother Nature has tried to fluff with Earth's residents. One of the most memorable times she's been thwarted directly by humans came in Michael Bay's typically overblown Armageddon, when her attempt to kill all life with a giant sky boulder was stopped by Bruce Willis and drillers. Surely humanity would send their very best men to stop such a disaster happening, but no, instead humanity sent a couple of astronauts with two crews of drug-using, law-dodging oil riggers with a minute amount of space training and questionable mental state, including one who literally kept failing at his job and destroying all the machinery. I mean, who would have guessed they would defy science in drilling to the right depth and then conspire to miss the zero barrier point when destroying the meteor would still kill Earth, but the plan would somehow work anyway? Something is not right here, and Ben Affleck was absolutely right when he turned to Michael Bay and said, wouldn't it be easier to teach astronauts to drill than drillers to be astronauts? And number one, Darth Vader. Aside from the Joker, Darth Vader is pretty much unrivaled for the title of the greatest screen villain of all time. Yes, he's forced to be the puppet of the Emperor, but he still manages to transcend his master in the villainy stakes during the first three movies, and by right, it should have taken someone of incredible power to defeat him. Instead, a simple farm boy with an aptitude for fixing gay robots somehow manages to stumble through battles with the Sith Lord to ultimate victory, despite the fact that he basically spends the rest of the trilogy having his life saved by other people. Without Han, Luke would be dead. Without Ben Kenobi, Luke would be dead. Without Lando, Luke would be dead. And yet, the good-natured moron with the magic powers prevails over the all-powerful evil juggernaut. I call bullshit, sir. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com, and I'll see you soon.